BYD have just finished building the world's largest car carrier. It's one of an armada of apparently seven car carriers that will enable BYD to ship cars all around the world in their quest to become the largest automaker on the planet. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. This is a, an enormous ship. BYD actually launched the world's largest vehicle, Roro Vessel, which can accommodate up to 9,200 cars. You know, it's kind of interesting. What happened after COVID was global shipping, for some reason, became quite expensive. So if you're manufacturing cars, wherever it may be, Japan, Germany, China, the United States, and then you're shipping them around the world anywhere, shipping costs have gone up ex in, in, insanely. I mean, to the point where... You kind of thinking to yourself, how can this have happened? I don't know how it happened, but it did. So BYD pretty much saw this coming, and they contracted a one of the biggest shipbuilders in the world to build them a bunch of enormous car carrying vessels. The carrier, named after BYD's hometown, undocked in Yangzhou Port, about three hours northwest of Shanghai. This vessel is pretty damn big. It's two hundred and twenty meters long. 37.7 meters wide and has a draft of nine meters. Its maximum speed is 18.5 knots, which is 34.3 kilometers an hour. Unfortunately, it's not electric or powered by anything renewable, as of course, almost no ships of this size are. BYD Shenzhen is BYD's fourth car carrier. The company plans to have eight carriers in total by early 2026 to fuel its global expansion. It's going to mean that BYD won't be relying on anyone else in order to, you know, become bigger than Toyota, which I think it will. BYD is known for its enormous vertical integration. Instead of relying on 30 party, party suppliers, it does things themselves. They're actually the second biggest battery company in the world. They make their own motors. They make their own, well, basically they make everything that goes into their cars. Not everything, but most of them, they, most of the stuff that goes into an, into an EV, they make in-house. In addition to making cars, they produce battery packs, cells, uh, they own lithium mines, they produce iPads, uh, they operate an EV insurance company in China to cover all parts of the EV supply chain. Yeah, you can see they're, they're quite vertically integrated. BYD claims the Shenzhen is the world's most environmentally friendly car carrier. It actually is a bit better. I mean, all the ships that come into the port here where I live in Newcastle, I've seen them all today coming in and out. There's just massive plumes of this diesel fumes coming out of them. It's when the wind is blowing in the wrong direction back towards the, the shore, it stinks really, really badly. I mean, there's no fuel, there's no filters on these ships. They are just pumping out toxic fumes. BBD's new car carrier uses liquid natural gas dual fuel technology, allowing it to run on LNG and traditional marine fuel. So I mean, that is definitely an improvement over just standard marine fuel. It's also equipped with energy-saving devices to enhance operational efficiency. BYD Shenzhen is the first carrier to feature BYD box stationary storage batteries. Now, what those batteries do, I'm not sure. It sounds like they will most likely power the ship during docking or in low emission zones to reduce fuel consumption. So this actually will be powered by batteries, just not for its the main part of its journey. The Shenzhen-based automaker launched its first carrier a year ago, says Car News China, in January 2024, called the BYD Explorer. It was followed by the BYD Changsu, launched in December 2024, and that one set sail to Europe with 5,000 electric cars on board. Last week, Car News China says that BYD put into operation the 7,000 car carrier BYD Hefe. The company plans to have a fleet of eight carriers which is a lot, and I think it's more than any other car company in the world. Now, Hyundai do have a shipping company, but it's actually not affiliated with the car company. It's a separate business. This is um, definitely part of BYD's main car brand. All eight BYD car carriers are designed in as Roro vessels. Roro stands for roll on, roll off. And that means a ship that carries vehicles driven off and on the boat via built-in ramps. So you can just drive the vehicle straight onto the, onto the ship. It's a proper car carrier. In 2024, BYD exported 417,000 EVs 
which was, to be honest, not really a large percentage of their sales. In fact, that meant only about 10% of everybody's cars actually were shipped outside of China. About 90% were sold in China. But it was still growth of 72% from 2023. The company sold 4.25 million passenger vehicles globally in 2024. And they're actually aiming, well, okay, analysts are saying they're going to sell over 5 million cars easily worldwide in 2025. But mainly, BOD are planning a global onslaught. And analysts in the United States believe that BOD's global sales, as in outside of China, are going to increase by at least 100% over the next 12 months, which would be a, a good move for them to kind of decentralize their sales away from being so China heavy. Now, guys, here in Australia, BOD cars, they are obviously super popular. BOD have a huge range of models. The model list is growing pretty significantly, and their pricing is insane. I mean, they discount, discounted every single model for the new year, uh, provided some small upgrades as well. Kind of scary if you're one of their rivals. Now, Toyota says that BOD are no threat to them, uh, that um, you know all they need to do is offer great service and a dealership network, and there's no concern about uh, Chinese rivals being able to disrupt them. Of course, Toyota is pretending that what's been happening in China and what's actually happening in Japan isn't happening. Toyota's EV sales in uh, in Japan actually went down last year by 40%. BYD's went up by more than 100%. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. So BYD, they bought a Cybertruck in the United States, then they shipped it all the way to China. Now it's at their factory. Why did BYD do this? I mean, there is definitely a reason for them doing this. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. If you want to support the channel, you can by becoming a member. I'll put a link in the description. BYD. They, well, as of a few months ago, weren't really in the pickup truck market at all, were they? And even now, to be honest, they're not really a, they're a very, very small player in the pickup truck market. Only a really small number of BYD sharks so far have been sold to customers, but BYD, they are in every segment, aren't they? They've got, what, 40-something models? I kid you not, it's 40-something. And BYD know the most lucrative market is... SUVs, large SUVs, pickup trucks, that's where the big money is. That's where you can really make a lot of money. And believe it or not, even though BYD doesn't plan yet on selling pickup trucks in America, not yet anyway, it does plan on selling them in some of the biggest pickup truck markets that exist outside of America, which are places like Brazil, Mexico, Australia, Thailand, in those places, pickup trucks are the most popular vehicles that you can buy. Mm -hmm. 